Hi everyone, this is Shane Armandro, and today we're going to be looking at the Raspberry Pi 400 Personal Computer Kit. Let's do it. Alright, so Raspberry Pi is probably familiar to everybody watching the channel. It's this little tiny personal computer that can do lots of cool things. You buy a little case on Etsy that looks like an NES, and you put some games on it, and you play it, right? Well, somebody thought it'd be a really good idea for those people who use the Raspberry Pi as more of a computer, like a Commodore 64 or a Commodore Amiga or an MS-DOS machine, to actually come out with a form factor that fits a Raspberry Pi 4 and um, comes in this beautiful standalone keyboard type configuration, sort of like a Commodore 64 might. So all the computers right inside here. So this comes in both a kit form and a standalone form. In this case, we're going to look at the kit because the kit comes with everything you need. This is literally an entire computer in a box. Let's unbox this thing. Let's see what's inside. And then I'll give you the visual brochure and then we'll play with it and we'll see uh, what sort of uh, mischief we can get into, shall we? So if we take a look in the box, we open up the guy, just slides right off. We'll put that to the side and we open up the box. Right here on the top is the keyboard itself and it's very, very beautiful. I love the red and white tones. We'll look at closer at that in just a minute. This top piece comes off, put that to the side. Included inside, Raspberry Pi official power supply so you get all the voltage that you need. The official Raspberry Pi mouse, because why not have a mouse that looks like your Raspberry Pi? And then in the bottom, we have this other thing. Let's move this to the side here. And inside here, we have our micro SD card. It comes with the Raspberry Pi operating system installed. This is just an adapter. And then also on the inside, the mini HDMI to full HDMI. A lot, of, a lot of the standalone ones don't have that, right? This comes with the kit. So all of this stuff that you're seeing here is all part of the kit. Also in here is the book. This is something interesting. You know, people who didn't live through like the 80s and even the early 90s, when you bought a computer, it came like in a box with manuals and all sorts of beginner stuff. And here we have a beautiful thick book, full color, Easy to see, easy to read, easy to understand book. Sort of reminiscent about the days of the past when you actually got something tangible with your computer. Uh, along with that, of course, we've got the main unit itself. The Raspberry Pi is already installed, so you don't have to worry about doing any sort of installation of any kind. Uh, let's take a look at the unit itself. So we have here, you would call this more the chiclet type key uh, keyboard. This is very common in a lot of Chromebook devices, Chrome OS devices. It's very comfortable. I mean, a lot of people would probably say, um, I'm not sure I dig on that keyboard. It, listen, it's not a Commodore 64 keyboard or an IBM clackety keyboard or even a Corsair keyboard, but uh, truth is it's pretty, it's pretty dang comfortable to, once you get used to using it, of course. Arrow keys, there's no 10 key, of course, but you can use function keys to simulate that on this keyboard. So it's small, compact, it's nice and light, but not too light, so it doesn't feel cheap. And on the back side, we don't have much, maybe some venting here and a little placard. And the rest of the fun is on the back. So let's take a look. Let's see if I can get close enough here where you can really enjoy this guy. So here's our uh, input output area. Right, this is our little input output pins for if you've got uh, you're a hobbyist and you use this for sort of expansion. Here we have the SD card slot. We have two HDMI's out, which by the way, this actually is important. I'll talk about that later. Here's your USB C power in, two USB 3.0 ports, one USB 2, and then of course an Ethernet connector and then a keyboard lock. A lot of people are like, What is that port? It's a keyboard lock. All right. So listen, let's watch the visual brochure, and then while you're watching that, I'm going to set this guy up and we'll take her for a spin. The Raspberry Pi 400 Personal Computer Kit comes with everything you need for a complete Raspberry Pi experience right out of the box. The all-in-one official Raspberry Pi keyboard device contains the Raspberry Pi itself and it comes pre-installed, so there is no assembly required, and thanks to the included OS pre-installed SD card, 
you won't even have to download and write your own image. It is truly ready to use. The rear of the Pi 400 has plenty of ports, including two mini HDMI ports. An adapter is included in the box to convert mini to standard HDMI. Micro SD card slot, USB-C power plug, two USB 3.0 ports, one USB 2.0 port, and Ethernet port for wired high-speed connectivity. Also included is a 40-pin GPIO connection for expansion and hobbyist projects. Also included in the kit is the official Raspberry Pi themed optical USB mouse, an official 3 amp USB-C power supply, and a gorgeous full color beginner's guide reminiscent of the computers of old when they used to pack in these sorts of introduction guides in every box. Once put together, it looks great and has a very minimalistic feel and footprint. Again, like the computer days of old, sort of a sleek white Commodore 64. The Pi 400 can be used for basic computer tasks such as common office work, surfing the internet, and watching videos. And with specialty SD card images, you can turn this device into a Chromebook, a retro gaming powerhouse, and even a fully realized classic computer like the Commodore Amiga. The Keyboard Pi is available as both the kit we're reviewing here as well as a standalone product saving you some dollars if you already have a mouse, SD card, and power supply. But it should be noted you will not get the beginner's guide with the standalone SKU. Thanks to the low power requirements of portable monitors like the Virzen one shown here, you can run the Pi computer and video for hours off a single power bank like the RAV Power one shown here, making it useful as a second screen PC, travel computer, or even a portable entertainment device that would plug into a hotel TV pretty easily for functionality on the go. The Raspberry Pi 400 is best experienced in the full kit form as it is truly a full computer in a box. But even if you don't go with the bundled package, I'm sure you'll find exciting and fun things to do with your new Pi-based computing entertainment center. All right, so we're all set up now and um, there's not much to see here. I mean, I've plugged the mouse in, I've got the HDMI plugged in. I did add this power switch in between the power supply and the Pi so I can turn it off without unplugging it. That did not come included with the kit, but they're relatively easy to get just about anywhere. I am using the mouse. I've tried to tuck away all the cables that I possibly can. Normally I would have the monitor in front or I would have it to the side to the left so these cables wouldn't be interfering with my mouse, but we're gonna do the best we can. And when we look at this guy a little bit closer, we're gonna be using direct feed. So um, you won't have to put up with any sort of glares or anything that's going on here. I know that can be difficult. So um, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and get everything turned back on and let's watch this guy boot up. So this is a Virzen portable monitor. I love these things. If you have the means, I highly recommend picking one up. I'll have a link down below. These things work great for videos like this in a pinch, taking it with you on the go. They're light, they're easy to carry, and they got a pretty, pretty good picture and mm, okay speakers. All right, so let's go ahead and get this guy fired up. So once you power on, um, we will start the boot process. So much like any other computer, there's a boot up time. And just because it's a Raspberry Pi doesn't necessarily mean it's any faster. But it's fast enough for what we need it to do. So we get some basic boot screen stuff. What looks like a little bit of DOS. Feels sort of like Windows 95 booting for those of you that remember. And there we are. We're now inside the Raspberry Pi's uh, included operating system. And there's quite a bit to see and do in here. And we're going to look at this individually. So you don't really have to pay too much attention now. But it looks and feels like a basic windowing type user interface. Comes complete with web browsers. Comes complete with office type tools. Everything that you would need to do basic computer work is also available within this Raspberry Pi image. And uh, it's, it's got Bluetooth, it's got uh, networking, and we're going to talk about all this a little bit more in the future. But suffice to say that out of the box, it comes with a pretty good assortment of stuff. But as we delve into each individual type of operating system that you can run on here, you'll start to see the flexibility of the unit and why you might want to have a keyboard at all as part of your Raspberry Pi set. So uh, shutting down... Uh, I will tell you that the Raspberry Pi does use an SD card for everything, and SD cards, well, you know, they're a little bit on the frail side. 
So always make sure that whatever, whenever you're leaving one of these, it's really hard to see at this angle. If <laughs> go ahead and shut the thing down so that it finishes flushing anything out to the SD card that it needs to do. And the power light goes out. There is a power light, a shift lock and some other lights here at the top. I didn't really show that earlier because they weren't lit up and now they're not lit up either because I shut it down. So one of the more appealing characteristics of a Pi as a personal computer or as an entertainment device is the fact that the Raspberry Pi uses a removable SD card as its main source of operation. Now, yes, there are, you can put on external hard drives. Uh, you saw earlier in that video, the M2, the Argon M2, where I actually put a an M2 hard drive inside of my Argon Pi case, and now I have a full self-contained, kind of ready-to-go, super-fast booting system. But one of the appeals here is that you can simply eject that SD card and stick a different one in, and now you have something completely different. I just went from Raspberry OS to Chrome OS by simply shifting the SD card. I can also shift the SD card out and go to a full-blown Amiga computer. A fully, uh, a fully realized, modern, state-of-the-art Amiga computer by putting in this SD card. And last but not least, I have every game console and computer on the planet available to me as a retro gaming package with this SD card. So it's almost like having the ultimate console. And once we actually see these things in operation, it'll make more sense. So let's just get on with that right now. And now let's take a look at the included operating system that comes with this kit on a 16 gigabyte SD card. This is the uh, Raspberry Pi's sort of official operating system. And it is actually fairly formidable for uh, what it is and for what you might use it for. As you can see, it looks fairly modernized. Let's take a look up here. Here's sort of our start button. And uh, if we take a look at the help, uh, again, it's, it's, still, it's still in its boot process, just like Windows. So you've got to give it a second. But um, this will give you a little bit more information about the Pi, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but yeah, you can see here it comes preloaded with a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, there's some programming stuff included, some educational stuff, all of the sort of office-based sort of thing with uh, LibreOffice. Listen, if you know how to use uh, Microsoft's platform or Google's platform, all of these end up being more or less the same sort of deal, right? And this one happens to be free. And I had one that was... Um... Yeah, well, guess what? I don't... Uh... I don't have that one, so let's just cancel out and we'll start a new one. That's what happens when you run these videos. So now we have uh, now we have your standard word processing package. So uh, it's pretty snappy. It does the job. And hello there. So anyway, so you've got word processing available to you along with uh, other sorts of things. Draw, your uh, database type stuff. Listen, it's all there. Uh, for internet, we have the Chromium web browser, which is what Google Chrome is based on, along with uh, a couple of other little tools, a mail client and a remote viewer. So we run the Chromium web browser. And we can hop to YouTube. And again, uh, from an OS point of view, I'm guessing that uh, the faster your SD card, now I'm, I'm sure that they included a decent SD card with this kit, but if you get something that's known to be super, super high speed, you might be able to get a little bit better performance. Now this is being uh, connected um, via Wi-Fi here. So I could turn off Wi-Fi and go to Ethernet, which would probably get me a little bit better experience, but both are available. And so again, there's a little bit of there's a little bit of tearing going on, a little bit of flickering uh, here. So let's see, uh, let's grab a video here. I will mute it, and we'll just see sort of what the playback looks like. It looks all right, uh, a little stuttery. This is probably a uh, this is going to 720p60, so 
maybe I could, uh, if I drop it to like 480, maybe I'll get a little bit better performance. Yeah, all right, that's, uh, so that's a little bit better. So you do have a web browser, and this is perfectly capable, a perfectly capable web browser. Let's leave that running. Sound and video, you've got the VLC media player, which is what I use on my Windows uh, computers as well. You got some graphic stuff, an image viewer, a couple of standard games, some basic accessories, your calculator, SD card copier, diagnostics, PDF viewer, that sort of thing. And of course, uh, you do have the ability to add and remove software as well as get recommended software. Uh, so this is sort of the, uh, the package package uh, tool. So if we were looking for something like, um, I don't know, like an Amiga emulator. Let's see if that comes up with anything just for fun. Oh, take your sweet time too. All right. So we have a Handful of items that came up. What if we want to look at what games were available, right? So uh, you can Ancient Game of Warfare, Seven Kingdoms, blah, blah, blah. So it looks like there's a whole bunch of stuff in here that you could get access to. Should you want to expand your Raspberry Pi OS. Uh, and of course, um, you know, your basic uh, file manager, right? So you could plug in a USB drive, get access to your documents, all that sort of thing. Uh, nothing in pictures. Hmm. Downloads, documents. There's nothing going on in here. <laughs> oh, well, here's the digital version of the beginner's guide that we were talking about earlier. There it is. Nice. Get a PDF of that included in the image. Very cool for those of you who prefer digital over the, the comforts of uh, the printed page. But yeah, and of course, for those of you who are power users, you can always get to a shell and do uh, amazing and possibly terrible things to your operating system. But there you go. Uh, so a formidable little included bonus. Uh, a lot of people are going to just download some sort of a, a pre-made image like RetroPie or something and throw it on here. But if you're looking for a uh, respectable, working, usable operating system. It comes included with the kit. And if you didn't buy the kit and you just bought it in its uh, normal form without all the extras, then you would need to write to this image yourself. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed looking at this uh, operating system that came included with the Pi 400 kit. Let's look at some of the other stuff we can do. All right, so let's take a look at Chrome OS or Chromium running on the Pi 400. So this would be, if you're already using a Chrome OS device, uh, this gives you the ability to instantly engage with this Pi 400 as a computer you already know. And there's a few caveats here. Let me log in real quick so you can see. There's several caveats actually with regards to using Chrome uh, OS on this Pi 400 device. And I'll show you around just a little bit. I won't spend a ton of time on here because this isn't germane to everybody. If you wanted Chrome OS, you would have bought some device with Chrome OS. But, um, but yeah, it's real simple. It's real easy to do. You write an image, you stuff the, the disk in here, the SD card, and you boot, and you're good to go. Um, it's kind of vamping here for a second. And that might be the first caveat. It's not notoriously fast. Uh, so I had a browser open when I left, which was one of my older videos. And as you can see, uh, it doesn't boot super fast. If you're used to Chrome OS devices, they boot, okay, quiet you. They boot really fast. You're in there really quick. And as you can see, this one doesn't boot as fast. Now you may be able to use a faster SD card and get a little bit more performance out of it. You're probably, um, you're probably suffering a little bit because I'm using an older 16 gigabyte SD card for this particular image. But as you can see, all of my, all of my stuff synced from my Chrome devices, which is my background from Witcher 3. My bookmarks came down. So really, this is instantly accessible to an end user with this new Pi 400. You can instantly be inside your Chrome environment and there is, um, there's value add to that. 
Now, what you probably notice as I'm dragging around is there's a lot of tearing going on. Um, listen, this is a developer build. It's an early build, and this is really not designed to be running Chrome OS, so we take what we can get. But for simple stuff like getting into Drive or, or watching some YouTube videos, Uh, it should work okay. It does default to a slightly lower resolution. Let me see if I can kick it up a little bit. Right, so uh, listen, uh, it, it works. And again, if you're doing a lot of browser-based stuff, then this, this might be a really good solution for you uh, to add to your Pi 400 repertoire. But uh, again, Speed is definitely an issue. And one of the things you're probably wondering is, hey, what about Android apps? The answer is absolutely no. There's no Android app capabilities in here. So what you see here is uh, pretty much what you get. And again, for a simple browsing machine, for simply um, surfing the internet, for handling banking, for handling a little bit of word processing, maybe a little spreadsheet work, uh, this, would, this would be a great alternative. So it's definitely an SD card you wanna have in your collection just in case you need it. But uh, probably if you want a more robust experience, then you would probably want to stick with Raspberry's own operating system. All right, so now it's time to look at another alternative operating system, this time the Commodore Amiga computer, all vamped out, decked out, and put on a single SD card for your amusement. Pimiga, or Pimiga at your service, sir. So this represents a next generation Amiga, which is still an Amiga, by the way. So this, <laughs> this probably doesn't look like what you remember an Amiga looking like, except for maybe that little pointer. That might give you some yearnings back to the old days of the Amiga 500 and the 1000. This is like a retargeted graphics, fully decked out, futuristic Amiga that still retains compatibility with all the old Amiga stuff. So you have this sort of Mac-esque launch bar at the bottom. You still see things like system and work. These are all things that you may recall seeing from the Amiga days. You may remember the drop downs. You may remember being able to um, uh, do some of these things like flipping windows back and forth and shrinking them. These are all things that are still here. But this is not just Amiga Workbench. This isn't just a windowing environment. This is loaded with tons and tons and tons of goodies to make this Amiga instantly usable. Let's start with Eagle Player. Here's a full-blown mod player loaded with hundreds of music mods, some you remember, some you've probably never heard of. But how great is this, that you can just jump in here and, and play? It's, it's awesome. You got the oscilloscope going. This is a lot of Amiga players. We used to just sit around and Amiga people would sit around and listen to music mods because they were just that good. So while that's playing, um, yeah, maybe not, maybe not while that's playing, huh? Can you open up a different one? I'm trying to remember uh, the actual controls of this guy. There's a power button here. Off you go. All right. So you have that. You have some, some staples like um, Directory Opus, right? Everybody remembers Directory Opus. But the power of this image comes from not only giving you sort of a familiar operating system that you probably grew up with, but also access to numerous mega demos right? Because that was something that we did a lot in the old days is running mega demos, such as state of the art. That's one I always remember. That's one I always showed people when I would show them my Amiga was this incredible state of the art demo. And so we're going to see if we can get our hands on state of the art here. They're roughly in some sort of a weird alphabetical order, but they're in alphabetical order over and over again. So I'm using the keyboard here instead of the mouse sort of get through this a little bit quicker since there doesn't seem to be any way of searching on here. But let's take a look at good old state of the art. This is one of my favorite demos. Let's see how it runs on this Pimiga. There's that intro, always blew me away. I'm still not sure, it's been how many years? 30? <laughs> 
35 years, and I'm still not exactly sure from a programming point of view how they pulled this off. This ran off of a single floppy disk, <laughs> and it ran on an unexpanded Amiga 500. It just truly blows me away what they were able to do. Let's see how this thing runs. Runs exactly the way I remember it. The music sounds good. There's no stuttering. There's no hiccups. Should have an epileptic warning on that one, I guess, nowadays, huh? So great. I'll wait for the first little morph transformation and I'll kick us out of here. I always get sucked in watching this demo, but this is a good demo to play. Oh, we got a little slow down here. This always gets all the emulators, though. Yeah, there's definitely slow down there, but hey, listen, it's still cool to be able to relive that. F10 drops us right back here. How great is that? For gaming, we have all of that set up here inside of this iGame application. How amazing. So now, this actually has a search filter. So if we want to take a look at, say, Super Stardust, we can run it right from here. Compliments of WH. D load. We get all sorts of cool uh, trainers and everything in here if we would like, or we'll just let it run native. I should just watch this intro over and over again. CB32 version was simply amazing. I'm shocked it's not on here. Of course, we have to steal from Star Wars because that's what we do. All right, so we're going to go ahead and bounce ourselves out of here and see if we can actually get into some gameplay. Let's see here. Oh, here we go. Had to remember what keys they were. I don't have a controller set up on here yet, but at some point I most certainly will. I'm better at this with a controller. Not much better, but a little bit. See, the shield isn't set up to the back. Anyway, you get the idea, and it works pretty well. Hit F10, we're back out the door. Um, so, I mean, obviously the images that you would have wouldn't necessarily have all of these games on there as well. But you can see that it works out very, very well. And not only do you have access to all the classic Amiga stuff, like the iGame and this iDemo app and all of the games and, and demos that come with that, but you also have access to some of this newer stuff as well that has been added to this over time such as Perfect Paint, this Riva video player, all sorts of good stuff that's available here. Now we could sit and do, we could do a whole hour talking about nothing more than the Amiga operating system as a whole and look at, uh, there's even, I mean, you can play Doom on here, right? They've got Heretic and Doom and all sorts of other games that eventually did get ported. Quake, that all got ported over to the Amiga at one point. Should we like launch Quake just for the fun of it? Can I just run the demo version so I don't actually have to do anything? Now we'll just let it run with whatever the native thing is. That runs it pretty pretty quick, too. Almost too fast, actually. Can't see anything. Let's see if we can do something here. Just to get around. Uh, I don't know what I don't know what the controls are set for this thing. Anyway. Anyway, I, I, I never, I didn't really get into that. I was already on the PC side by then, unfortunately, before all of these things got ported. But Heretic's in here. All A lot of these classic ones, Duke Nukem 3D, all of them are playable on the Amiga at this point, moving into the future. So that's it. Um, so that's that's the Amiga. That's turning your um, Pi Amiga or your Pi 400 personal computer kit into an Amiga computer. And I'll tell you, with a lot of these computers, emulations, you want the keyboard. And that's one of the best selling points. If you're doing Amiga, if you're doing Commodore 64 or VIC-20 or any computer, having a keyboard is gonna be really, really good to, um, to be able to, to navigate and get around these operating systems. Well, I think that'll wrap it up for the Amiga. Let's move on to our last alternate operating system. And perhaps we've saved the best for last, RetroPie, the all-in-one console, computer, handheld, classic video gaming emulator package. Now, I did not download a pre-created image. I 
created my own blank retro pie and I threw a handful of my favorite systems and favorite games just to show you how things work and how well they work here inside this platform. So once the system boots, which was actually fairly quick, you are presented with a crossbar menu uh, representing all of the systems that you have uh, copied ROMs over for. So I've got Super Nintendo, I've got arcade games, Atari 2600, Commodore 64, Daphne, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, Sega Mega Drive, AKA Sega Genesis, NES, PC Engine, AKA TurboGrafx-16, even a PlayStation 1 game. So uh, let's just jump through a couple of these so that you can see how they work. As you can see, if you've never seen RetroPie before, it's pretty easy to add games and then have it scrape this sort of metadata for you. And I will just grab something um, like Super Star Wars. And the game launches and you are presented with, you'll notice that my gamepad was already configured. Now this is not a video that's going to show you all about emulating everything um, or to tell you how good emulator X or Y is. I just want you to see that they do indeed work and that it is kind of nice to have this entire um, plethora of games at your disposal. Um, okay, so here we go. And let's do it. As you can see, it works very well. Again, you know, for those of you who are diehard emulator um, fans, you know, obviously you, you've probably already have a RetroPie set up on your own. And then it's just easy to drop back to the menu anytime. You can also move through the systems like this, so you don't have to be at that crossbar. So let's grab a little something that probably won't get me into any sort of weird trouble, like Mr. Do. I don't think anybody will get upset if I show Mr. Do off. Nah, it was a bad, bad pull. I can do better. I can do much better. Anyway, you get the idea. Um... Let's see, let's show something from, all right, how about a little 2600 action, why not? The system that started it all, well, one of the systems that started it all anyway. I gotta remember what buttons are which here. Here we go. Well, we've come a long way, haven't we? But still, sometimes you just want to play a really crappy version of 2600 Asteroids. There's something oddly appealing about this old version. Oh, great. That seemed totally fair. <laughs> what else do we got? Commodore 64. Let's see. What kind of damage could I do in here? Um, how about the impeccable Bruce Lee? Everybody loves Bruce Lee on the Commodore 64. Ah, the classic blue on blue screen. Certain things that nostalgia hits, those neurons start firing, you just remember everything. And this is the time when keyboards start to come in handy. Spacebar, for example. Run, stop. And of course you have all these trainers to ask. Would you like infinite health? Would you like infinite time? Do you want infinite lives? Do you want to be able to skip the next screen? Blah, 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 blah. I don't know if, if Bruce Lee actually has any of that or not. Yep, see, unlimited lives. Why, no, I do not. Opponents can't hit you, no. And there you see, function keys, yet again, right? So you have, and this of course requires a different joystick port, so I'd have to go and swap ports, blah, blah, blah. You get the idea. Don't want to spend too much time on one system. How about the uh, infamous Daphne laser disc arcade games from the 80s? Dragon's Lair, Space Ace, Dragon's Lair 2, Thayer's Quest, all sorts of them. 
and they do indeed play in here. All right, I don't want to play too much of this. I can get a copyright hit for this one. All right, enough of that. And how about a little Game Boy? Probably shouldn't be showing Donkey Kong, get myself in trouble, but... Oh, that one's not going to run anyway. Well, there you go. I didn't test all of these, you know. Let's see if uh, Burger Time will run. So, I mean, there's a bunch of configuration that has to be done. There we go. Don't you love Burger Time? The all-time classics. I was actually glad that was the right button. I was concerned for a second. Probably wasn't my best move. Come on, Piglet. Probably should have waited and get him, got him over the burger. Didn't say I was a great player at this. Ah, a little Game Boy Advance, huh? Speaking of Bruce Lee, am I right? All right, well, let's see. Uh, let's try something different. Um, I don't know, how about Prince of Persia? I was very impressed with the Game Boy Advance. You know, that was right at the end of my um, anti-Nintendo phase, and the, and the Game Boy Advance actually sold me on getting back into Nintendo handhelds. Just let's move along. Mm -mm 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 -mm. It's been a long time since I played this too. Nah, whatever. This isn't here for emulation, uh, emulation enjoyment. This is just to show you how it works. How about Sega Genesis, huh? Yep. I was definitely a Genesis over SNES guy. I don't know why I'm occasionally seeing a stutter here, but I am. I have a feeling it has to do with the SD card that I'm using, unfortunately. I had to dig to find a, an SD card for this guy, for this particular one. I, I, I wrote so many images. Yes, listen up, pilots. Man, these were great games, weren't they? I loved all of these games. All of this Desert Storm and Desert Strike and what a neat idea, really, if you think about it. it was like the sound of those missiles launching too, you know? Anyway, like I said, can't spend too much time here. Ah, yes. How about we look at Burger Time again? Why not? This will be a whole uh, segment on Burger Time. And Burger Time deserves its own segment. It's an amazing game. See, there's another one of those hiccups. I'm not sure what's causing that. It wasn't doing it before. It's funny, they just... It's interesting if you just kind of go incrementally through time and see how games have improved. Oh, I missed him. Too bad. Oops, this one is not the pepper on the same button. <laughs> All right, let's keep moving. I'm getting close here. A little Galaga 90 or Galaga 88. Yeah, I'm closing in on 10 minutes here. Yeah, what a great game. Yeah, I'll well, see what kind of game this would be if I was actually playing it for real, huh? It's not the emulator, it's me that sucks this time. But you get the idea. Ah, of course. You know, my daughters played the living crap out of this game. Actually, so did I, to be honest, but... Yeah, 
Anyway, so we'll continue to uh, chug through these games. I think this might be our last one anyway, and then we can tidy this up and finish up this video. But you can see it works great. I could sit here all day and just play classic games, but unfortunately, work must come first. Anyway, so you can see, it works great, plays great, looks great. Oops, ah, whatever. All right, I think that was it. Yes, the Retro Pie menu, and then we're back to Super Nintendo. Well, there you go. Um, so. Yet one more great thing you can do with the Raspberry Pi 400 personal computer kit. And that will conclude the remainder of our custom OSs. Let's finish this video up and call it a day. Well, listen, gang, I hope you enjoyed looking at the Raspberry Pi 400 personal computer kit. I love this thing for the price. You get an all-in-one computer. You get a gaming console. You get... Uh, personal computers of the past, almost anything can be run on here. And not just consumer type applications, but you can run servers off of here, run a pie hole so that you can block ads and adult content out of your home, block Facebook if you don't want your family on there like me. So the pie hole is another useful tool that we could be using this device for once you've burned yourself out of playing NES games. Listen, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like the channel, subscribe. We're almost at 2,000. You might even see 2,000 subscribers by the time you watch this video. Much appreciated. Growing the channel has always been my goal. Please hit the little bell, get notifications of our future videos. I'm Shane Armonroe. Thanks so much for watching. We appreciate it. And we're almost at 2,000 subscribers. Maybe you'll be number 2,000. Go ahead and do it. Just do it. Click it. Click it. Thanks again for watching. Take care.